Well, I'd like to begin by saying we didn't start out to find a foundation. We had a son who was very, very ill, and uh, nobody could come up with what was wrong with him. As a matter of fact, many of the doctors did not think of inflammatory bowel disease when someone came in with stomach pains. I was lying in the hospital, and my doctor came in and said to me, I think that you should see a psychiatrist because I think that you're, I think you have emotional problems. When it was first diagnosed with these stomach pains, the thought was, well, you know, we get stomach pains when we worry, anxiety. I had been through major surgery. I wasn't getting better. I suffered a, a setback with infections and I was in intensive care for two and a half months. And he's telling me this is in my head. And if you're anxious, see a therapist. They'll give you some pills. You won't be anxious and the pains will go away. So I did, I went to see a psychiatrist. And after a few sessions, the psychiatrist said to me, I don't think you need to come back anymore. I think that you're fine. I think that what you need to find some people that can help you with this. Nobody in this entire country was doing anything about it. There was no research going on, with the exception of Sick Children's Hospital in Toronto. Not only was it unknown, but the predictions by outsiders were, we would never succeed. After all, it's an unknown disease. We don't have support anywhere. How are you going to make it? So that motivated me even more to get involved with an organization that was trying to do something to educate people about what this is all about. Well, the first meeting was very good. It was, at, I guess, in Marilyn Finkelstein's basement. Everybody was involved because either they or one of their children was afflicted. The first meeting, my late husband um, got up and said, look, we know why we're here. We're not asking for money. We're trying to start something so that we can help fund research. The energy was there because we felt that somebody cared. You just weren't walking around in the hospital looking from place to place and what the... Somebody cared and somebody was with you. And a few of us put up our hands and we wanted to help. And finally, a gentleman at the back of my rec room, that's where the meeting was, stood up and he said, I would like to volunteer my wife. That's how it all started. That was the beginning of the foundation. After he stood up, people start volunteering. We managed to get a first group of about 20 people together. That was the absolute beginning. I moved to uh, Toronto in 1976. Uh, several years before that, I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease, and I had heard about uh, the organization, so I made an appointment, and it was uh, a very small office. Not even a desk, a table with a typewriter and a telephone. There was a uh, absolutely remarkable lady by the name of Diane Bronstein. Uh, Diane is a small lady with huge energy. We had to build not only chapters and get membership, we had to start to build a medical advisory council. With grace and enthusiasm and um, uh, an incredibly infectious and positive attitude, she told me a lot about the organization. We had to also develop some, some press and media coverage, which was almost non-existent. Let's put it this way. When I walk into a room, people leave because they know I'm always going to be asking for something. One of the main methods of raising money was selling fruit cakes. I mean, we did everything. We sold Christmas cakes out of our trunks. We sold tickets in hospitals and plazas. We, if we were making decorations for something, we were spray painting in garages. We were working all the time. The rain, the sleet, the snow, the dampness and the cold. And this volunteer got a call from someone saying, I'd like to buy one of those fruit cakes. Can you deliver it? And he got into his car and he drove all the way across town to make $4 profit for research for us. Everybody had a personal tap list. It was our family, our friends, any, our neighbors, anybody that we knew. Because we weren't asking for ourselves, we were asking for the foundation. And it was that kind of beautiful, crazy determination that raised $3 times many, many, many cakes for many years. We had so many bowlers among ourselves, and we'd always bring in a celebrity. 
we might have had Al Waxman. Well, Al was, he was a big supporter. Al helped us a lot in his day. He was very well known as a TV personality, but he, he always supported Crohn's and Colitis. Our first fundraiser in those days, which is probably 1974, was a, a car raffle and a dance. A little red, oh, I forget to old, I think. And we were able to take it into shopping centers on the weekend. I hate selling tickets. The, the only thing that I didn't want to do, I didn't want to be a salesperson. That's what you have to be. It was so hard to sell those tickets. I had a woman actually spit in my face, say, who are you kidding, you're going to put the money in your pocket. Never heard of such a thing as Crohn. I mean, it just people didn't know. So along with our mandate of finding a cure, we had to educate. And the exciting thing for me was I won the card draw. And I nearly fainted because here I am, the co-chair, and I won the car because I bought the book of tickets that my friend didn't sell. I didn't want to turn them in empty. I just bought them at the last minute. I thought, no, I cannot keep this car, and I needed a car, but I didn't want that car. I, I donated it back, and they auctioned it off, and that put us over the million-dollar mark. Do you know how exciting that was for me? Because I would never again be in the position where I could give that kind of a donation to my favorite charity. I'm so proud to carry on the legacy that the founder started over 40 years ago. Our promise is to find the cures and improve the quality of life of those uh, children and adults that are affected by these chronic diseases. Our fundraising has evolved over the years. Our signature event, the Gutsy Walk, this year we raised uh, $3.5 million, which is record-breaking. We had over 23,000 participants with 1,500 Gutsy Walk teams. Through their efforts, we've now grown to over 45 chapters across the country, and we've invested over $100 million in research to date. And this research is actually fueling treatments and further studies that help us to find the causes and triggers of Crohn's and colitis, of inflammatory bowel diseases. So Crohn's and Colitis Canada has really made a powerhouse of its research. Our researchers are among the best in the world. We are also leading the charge on trying to find the triggers of Crohn's and colitis through the implementation of the GEM project. And the GEM project stands for Genetic, Environmental and Microbial. And really it's trying to identify what causes this disease. We know that Crohn's and colitis are diseases that are hard to talk about. You know, people suffering with these diseases, they're invisible diseases, they don't want to talk about them, they're bathroom issues. But we continue to build awareness and we will continue to do this into the future. Today we have over 30,000 new social media followers. We're investing in fundraising activities and educational events across Canada. And these events are building awareness, are bringing people together to talk about the diseases and to be able to bring them into the forefront. So not only are we leading the charge on finding cures for these diseases, we're also improving the lives of children and adults living with these diseases by leading patient programs, education services, and advocacy. Crohn's and Colitis Canada has done so much for me. I love them so much. I owe so much to them, which is why I volunteer my time with them as often as I do. And I'm actually a gutsy mentor. So I speak to other individuals suffering from Crohn's and colitis online. Just having people I could talk to and, and share my, my experiences with uh, and my feelings with was, was of the utmost importance. It really helped me work through the disease and living with the disease. I'm so proud of our volunteers. All the work, the time, the energy that they put in comes straight from their heart. So proud of what this group started and how they what, what they managed to do. People ask me, are you still here? Are you still doing this? Yes. As far as I'm concerned, I have no choice. And as long uh, until we found a cure, I'm going to work my heart out. I am very optimistic and very convinced that together we will make it stop for life. <laughs>